Are we live? Okay, let's do it. There's three problems from the, the homework, my math lab, that were a little bit lower success, so we'll look at those. So this is the first one, number nine. So So when you see this, uh, the rate of change function of x f of x So the rate of change of the function x times some other function of x What's the structure? So it's the we always ask, start with the first question. What's the structure of this thing that we're finding the rate of change function for? Ali wants product. Ryan, you agree with that? He says yes. Brian? You think quotient? Megan, what do you think? Product or quotient? Product. Product. Yeah, so this is just our notation for rate of change. D, dx of this. So this is what we're looking at. Okay, so what's the product rule? Tony? Um, uh, F. Okay, so how about, can we just go right to this? So, so um, F of X. F of X. Okay, and what is the derivative of X? Is X a constant? Yeah, so it's the, that's, that's not a constant. That's the, yeah, so it's going to be the rate of change. So you're doing the second first. Okay, second times the rate of change of the first. Then what? <coughs> times? Times x? Is that your final answer? It doesn't look right, right? Yeah. What's, so what's, what do we got to change? Product rule. Jason? Yep. Should be plus. So it's, so it's the first times the rate of change of the second plus the second times the rate of change of the first. So that's what this is. You just did the other way around, which is fine. Okay? So, and then in terms of, this is saying evaluate the function at x equals 1, right? This, this vertical line with x equals 1. If, if you put x equals 1 in as the input, then what happens? You're going to get constants. And what's the rate of change going to be? So if we start by plugging in x equals 1, everything is then going to be, and the output will be numbers, right? And then what, what, what will the rate of change be? No? Well, what number? What will the rate of change be for any constant, the output of the function? There should be like a chorus of you all saying, what? Zero. The rate of change of a constant is? Zero. The rate of change of a constant is zero. So it doesn't make sense to, to evaluate first and then take the rate of change, right? So this is saying, what is the rate of change when x equals 1? So what do you do? You do the rate of change first, and then you find out what it is at 1. If you put the 1 in first, you're just going to get constants, and you'll, this will always happen. You'll always get rate of change of zero. Okay? So that may be why some of you missed it. So now that we have the rate of change function, it's saying evaluated at 1. So what is it? 1 times the rate of change at 1 plus the function at 1 times 1. So what do we got? 1 times rate of change of 1 is 2. What's the function at 1? 
one. So for me, this is three for my problem. Okay, questions on this one? Does it make sense? Okay, next one was 10. Okay, finding the rate of change function. What's the first question that we ask? Abdullah, what's the first question we should ask? John Paul? Uh, what's the structure? What's the, what's the overall structure which is going to govern which rule we're going to use in the big picture of it? So what is the overall structure? Jack? Quotient rule, right? So quotient rule. So the quotient rule says, have you been, did you practice your chant? Low D high. Minus high D low over low squared. Okay, so what is low? One plus cosine. Okay. D high. D high. Eric, what are we going to do for D high? Just, uh, 2x sine x. We, want, we need the rate of change of 2x sine x. Two sine x, what do you think? Kyle, tell me. Where's the three coming from? So that the, the numerator is two x sine x. And we're doing the rate of change of two x sine x. That's the numerator. Somebody else. David. Yeah, so it's the product rule, right? So in just the numerator of this quotient, we have a product. So within the quotient rule, when we get to the rate of change of the numerator, we need a product rule. Jason, want to do it? Okay. 2x. Cosine x. So that is d high, right? Or the rate of change of the numerator. Okay. Who was who was doing the quotient rule initially? Who was telling? Who told me one cosine x? Allie, anyway, take it over. Okay. Uh huh. Negative sine x. Okay, are we done? Abdullah, what else? Quotient rule. Low D high, minus high D low. Isabella. That's right. Okay, so maybe the part of the challenge here was was putting this in with the parentheses, correct, so that we could actually get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, we'll just do the numerator, get that right, because those parentheses aren't too bad. And then we'll put parentheses around that before we do the, the denominator. So 1 plus cosine x, 2x cosine x, oops, plus 2 sine x. And I think we can, so we'll just do, we can do plus, right, minus a negative. And then we can do uh, 2x times 
sine x and also do squared. So I think, do I have the numerator right? You can read it. I can't make this any bigger just because it's one of these pop-up windows. I think I got the numerator right. So now I'm going to put parentheses around that. And then divide by 1 plus cosine x, and let's see if we get it. If it likes it. Questions on this one? So product rule within the quotient rule, but the overall big picture is quotient rule. And so that's what the form in the end, that's what it'll look like. It looks like the quotient rule, but then just within it is, embedded in it, is our product rule from the numerator. Anybody have a question? Okay. 13 was the last one. Okay, so I gave you a tip here. They, they say, use the chain rule to do this. And why, is the, why do we know better than that? Let me write it out. It's 3x minus 1 to the 5th. Two minus x to the fifth to the fourth. They say use the chain rule, David. Yeah, this is this is product rule, right? So chain rule is involved, but we were, our our uh, plan, our plan of attack is product rule. So somebody new, Trevor, tell me how to start. Do you just know what the product rule is? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so can I call this one F and this one G? So tell me. Which would be what? So now we're on the derivative of g. What do we have to do for that? Lizzie. It's going to be negative 5x. Negative 5x to the fourth, that's the derivative of g. Like that? Times not, yeah. Yep, okay. Like that? Yeah. No to the third. Okay. How, how about now? We got it? Yeah. Okay, so this is F rate of change of G. Okay. Trevor, want to keep going? Okay. Tell me. Yep. So now for chain rule, now we do the rate of change of the interior function. Just three. 
Think about this. Think about this as a line, right? Three x minus one. That's a line. What's the rate of change of a line? Three x minus one. No matter what x is, right? What's the rate of change? Three. It's the the slope of the line. What's the rate of change? No matter what x is. Okay. So I'm confident we could get the <coughs> get that in there correctly. Okay. Qu any other questions on my math lab? <clears throat> okay, let me talk about the, so uh, let's talk about the mastery exam. There's two parts to the mastery exam. The first half is 25 very short problems. You have to do them all, okay? And so it's like 4x, here, I'll just give you some examples. It's like 4x to the ninth. Um, square root of x cubed. Uh, 2 natural log of x. So let's just take five minutes. I'll just keep writing these up here and so we'll just we'll just practice. This is like drill and practice, okay? Pi. Pi. Is that better? Okay. So just do these. So there'll be 25 like these. So we'll do these and then we'll talk about them.
Okay, so, and then if you want to talk about them with people at your table, so compare your answers, talk them over.
Ooh, that's pretty cool. Okay, just like two more minutes. Okay, so that we have time for your questions on the, the mastery list, let's <laughs> rapid fire through these. Kyle, you're first, number one. Okay. Elizabeth. Yes, it is um, with 3x squared over 2 parentheses x to the third plus parentheses use. Okay, so use the chain rule to do it. Yeah. So she used the chain rule. She said 1 over 2, like this. But I haven't done the I haven't done the interior. That's that that would be the exterior, right? Then times. Is that what you got? Okay, so that's that's a valid way to do it. You can see it as a chain rule problem, and you can do it this way. So it'd be three halves. Okay. The only the thing about that is um, it then requires some simplification here. Anybody do this a different way? Danny. Simplifying no, one. no. Um, the other way to do it would be to change it into x to the three halves, and then you can just use the power rule to make it three halves x to the one half. Yeah, that, that's what, kind of what I was intending there. Chain rule is perfectly legit, but this is kind of a faster track. If you can see that as x to a power x to the 3 halves, then you just use the power rule, and you're done. OK, number three. Jason. Oh, I, d I did the very thing I told you not to do. Oh, no, that's what that is, right? OK, sorry. That's right. Those are equal, and then that's the rate of change. OK. So what I did is I um, used the natural log rule. Okay. What is the overall structure of this? Product rule? Just constant multiple. If product rule if they're both functions of x. Okay? You could apply the product rule to this and you get it right, but that's the long way. Okay? So if one of them is just a constant, then this is constant multiple. So you take two times, and then what did you say the rate of change was? 1 over x. So you said 2 over x. OK, 5 to the x. Patrick. OK. 
Okay. So th these short ones are just like, do you know the rule? Do you have you memorized the rules? We're just applying the rules mostly. Okay. Log base nine of x. Ryan. I didn't know how to do this one. So yeah, we just got to memorize the rule. What is the rule for log base nine? Ben. Yep. Okay, cosecant. Zoo. Nice what nice and loud was it? That's it. Negative cosecant cotangent. We just gotta memorize these. Um Reshma, arc tangent. Okay, you got 24 hours. Got to learn these. Eric. Arctan. That's right. That one comes up a lot. That that's just a common form that comes up in calculus and so um it is the rate of change of the arctan function. E squared, David. Isn't it 2e to the 1? Okay, be careful. Why is it not 2e to the 1? e squared is just a number. There's no x in it, right? This is just a constant. This is just a number. Be careful. x to the pi. John, John Paul. I said x to the pi ln x. What am I Note that you're thinking exponential function where x is in the exponent. This is x to a power. Jason. Oh, so pi, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, pi x to pi minus 1. That's it. Jason, is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Okay. x to the minus 7. Brian, right here. Um, so be 7x to the negative 8. Almost. Oh, negative 7. Negative 7, x to the minus 8. Negative cotangent. Isabella. That's it. Because cotangent is negative cosecant. Squared. So negative cotangent is cosecant squared. Arc sine. Ben. Okay. Just memorization. E to the 2x. Tony. E to the 2x. But that's a function of x. This is a composite. So what will you need? Times 2. So it's 2 e to the 2x. Pi to the 1.5. Eric. Why? It's just a number. Pi to the 1.5 is a value, a constant. Its rate of change is 0. Be careful. So common mistake, 1.5 pi to the 0.5. Not right. It's the rate of change is 0. OK, what is this equal to before we take the rate of change? Megan. Good. And, okay, and so the rate of change is? Yep. Negative two thirds over, or, yeah, that's right. Negative two over three x to the five thirds. Okay, ln of seven. John Paul. I said one over seven. No. You fell for it. What is ln of seven? Zero. Natural log of seven. What kind of thing is that? Is that just a constant? It's just a constant. It's just a number. There's no x in it, you see? There's no x. It's just a number. Rate of change is? Zero. Zero. Sign of E. Abdullah. Zero. A little help from his friends. Okay. Yep, it's another constant. Sine E is just a constant. Zero. Any questions on these? Okay, so we got some time for those of you who started working on the, the 50. So that's that's the first half. The first half will be 25, just like this. It will include all the basic ones. Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant. 
arc tangent. And then if you, and then if you power rule, if you square root ones, log, exponential, just like this, but 25 of them. So just so just to see if you know every rule, okay? Question? Is it multiple choice? Like no, nope, you're writing them out. Okay. It's just like this. I just give it to you, and you're going to write it out. Danny. Um, is there a possibility that arc cosecant or arc cotangent would be on the 25? No, I told you just the four. So for the arc sine, or the uh, arc, um, the inverse trig functions, arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, arc secant. Just those four. Yeah. Uh, will there be any implicit differentiation? No. Okay. I told you we're going to learn some new stuff today. We're not learning it. So those, that that list that I gave you, uh, we'll learn it on Wednesday. Not on there. Okay. We're not we're not learning new stuff. I want to make sure you got this. Do we need to memorize all the rules or like unique rules? No. You, that's the point. That's the whole point of this. Memorize. Memorize. Right, Shmuel. Twenty-five of these. Two points each. Ten from the list. You don't know which ten you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. Okay. You're going to get some, you're going to get ten of those. So those who worked on them, let's do a couple. Can I erase? Okay. Let's just take some some nominations and then maybe take a quick vote. It's voting season, right? So, suggestions for ones to, to work on. Allie. 44. 44. What else? Just shout them out. 23. I heard 43. I heard 23. Any other suggestions? Which one? 50. 50. 50. Number three? We won't have time for all of them, but I'll put it on the list. Is this, our, is this what it looks like? Okay, so you also said five? No, five is implicit. It's not, it doesn't count, right? So what are the ones that won't be on there? There should be ten of them, okay? Did I make a list of ten on, the, on Blackboard? So if it looks like this, we don't know how to do it yet. Yes. And this is also, if it has an x in the base and an x in the numerator, and, and an x in the power, that's logarithmic. We don't know how to do that. And then if it's an equation with x's and y's kind of intermixed, then we don't, those, those are the types that do not count. In that case, can I sub my 43 for uh, 39? Right, 43 is not. Yeah. All right, so. Again, 44, that's also one that's not, we don't have to do. 23. Okay, 23 is good. 50 is good. So 23, 50, and 3 are all good. 39. 39 is good. All right, so that's plenty. So we'll start with 23. Radical X tan X. Who asked for this? Who's that? Okay. What's the overall structure, John Paul? Is 
product, you say, asking if it's product rule. Is it one function times another function of x? That's what it is. So what's the product rule? First times? Yep. Okay. So what's the first? Times? That's it. Just got to know the rules. So you got to know the product rule, and then you got to know square root and tangent, and then you just plug it into the product rule. So here's, I'm not going to post, I'm not going to post answers, but here's what you can do. Here's how you can check it. How can we check it? We can say, set up a function. That's going to be the given function. In this case, it is square root, uh, square root x times tangent x. And then what can I do? How can we check this? How can we use a graphical approach to see if this is right? See if our closed form is correct. What's that? Yeah, we can graph. So we can graph the open form. Call it r of x. And what is that? f of f of what? x plus. We want a small h, right? Minus f all over the same small h that I used before. Okay. So then I can graph. I can graph the open form, and I can graph our solution. And what should happen? What's that? Do I have it correct? Radical x secant x squared tangent x times 2 radical x. So let's graph. Sweet. Okay, so what is that? That's our, our closed form answer. And so if I graph the open form, the open form uh, rate of change of a given function, what should happen if we did it right? Right over the top. So use graphing calculator. Use a graphical approach. Graph the open form, the rate of change, and graph your answer. And if they land on top of each other, you did it right. Okay, so that's how you can check answers you're not sure about. Okay, what's the next one we want to do? Number 50? Cotangent of log base 2 x to the 10th. Sorry. What did I say? Cotangent of log base two of x, and that whole, and then that log to the tenth. Okay. Overall structure. Lizzie said chain rule. What is our exterior? Function. Is it product rule or chain rule? Chain. This is this is functions, outputs of one function as input into another. This is, there's no products here. So what's the exterior 
function. What's the exterior function? Cotangent. So we've got to know the rule for cotangent. This whole thing is going to look like cotangent and then chain rule. So what is cotangent? No, negative cosecant squared of the interior function, unchanged, right? The, a common mistake students make is instead of leaving the interior function unchanged, they put the rate of change function in there. But when you do the first step in the chain rule, your interior function stays the same. Okay, now times what? The rate of change of the inside. What's the structure of that? Chain rule, exterior function to the 10th. So it's going to be 10 times log 2x to the 9th. Are we done? No. Times? Tell me. Over x, ln of 2. Did we get the whole thing? Questions on this? One more. I, I erased my list. I apologize. What was next on my list? Anyone have it? Number three? Great. Ln a cosine. Beautiful. Ln a cosine. What is the overall structure? Chain rule. Danny, what's the exterior function? Ln of x. What will we do then? Um, one, over x. 1 over whatever we're taking the ln of, right? So 1 over well, cosine of x. Yep, you see? So if, 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 <coughs> if cosine of x is plugged into natural log, we do the rate of change of natural log. Natural log says, uh, the rate of change of natural log says take 1 over the input. Ln of x, 1 over x, ln of cosine x, 1 over cosine x. But it's it's chain rule, so then what? Times the rate of change of the interior function. Patrick, what's that? Sorry, rate of change of the interior function. Negative sine. Negative sine. So negative sine over cosine. So yeah, this is this is good right here. It, in fact, it instructs you on the on the exam. Don't do any simplification. Just do the first step of the rate of change completely and stop. Um, Danny, the thing that confused me, I guess, was when I did this in graphing calculator. Um, the r of x is only like half of the intervals that. Okay, so this is a domain issue. Cos so natural log is only it only uh, exists for input greater than zero. What about the output of cosine? It, 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 it fluctuates negative positive negative positive. So it's only gonna it's gonna have these intervals where it exists where the cosine is positive. So yeah. Whereas this exists for all, all uh, there's only certain certain points where cosine is zero that doesn't exist. So yeah, you're going to have, this will, this will, uh, but the derivative is correct. It's just a matter of like, the yeah, so, the so it, this would be the rate of change for, for values of x that make that defined. Yeah. Okay. But this is also defined for other values of x that has no relation to this, right? Okay. So this only, this has a limited domain. Wherever this exists, that will be the rate of change function for it. Yeah? Um, I have a question. For number four, you took arc tangent of x to the negative 6. Okay. That would be on the thing? Sure. Sure. It's just what? what's the overall structure? Which one? Number 40? Yeah. How about that? How about this? Number 40. Arc tan uh, x to the negative 6. Absolutely. What's the overall structure of that? Arctan of x to the minus 6. Yes. Yeah, the chain rule. Because you got x to the minus 6. Its output is the input into arctan. So what will we start with? Let's do it, and we'll be done.
arctan x to the minus 6. So, overall structure. One over one plus. So what will be squared? X to the minus six squared. Do you see? If it were just arctangent x, it would just be one over one plus x squared. But now we're plugging something in, so it's one over one plus that thing squared. Are we done? Is it is it done? By the chain rule now times. Okay, so what you want to do is you're going to work through those. It's actually now down to 40. I'll put, I'll put on Blackboard, I'll put the exact problem numbers. I'll make sure I get the numbers right of the ones that we don't need. We're not doing, okay? Um, so you check with graphing calculator. If you can't, if you still can't get it to work, then you can send me an email and say, here's my here's my answer. I can't, I don't think it's right. So I'll be happy to check it for your email. Uh, when you said there was only 25, five each. Fifty points. So twenty-five short ones. 10 from the list.